Uh, so now we move on to the physics section. And for this page, all you need to know is this formula here, where speed equals distance over time. And what you generally need to understand is that if the top number distance traveled goes up, then speed goes up. And if the time taken in seconds goes up, then speed goes down. You know, just basic maths. And it's talking about the same thing here about speed of cameras, where they say speed equals distance over time. Same thing. And here's some examples of how to use a formula. But instead of going through this example, we'll go through some exam questions instead. So let's look at the first exam question. Right, okay. So the question reads, look at the distance time graphs for the four cars. So here you got the distance time, then you got the Corsa, Fiesta, Mini, and Punto. Right, so when looking at this graph, what you should be thinking about is the next page of the revision guide, which is this graph here, higher tier material. So if we zoom in, showing you that this part here where it's more steep, it's traveling faster because there's more distance covered in a less amount of time. So therefore, this is this section shows that gradually increasing gradient shows object speed is increasing. And if the graph is becoming less steep, as shown here, like it's leveling off, then gradually decreasing gradient shows object speed is decreasing because less distance is being covered in a greater amount of time. So as mentioned earlier, if there's more distance, then speed goes up. If there's more time taken, then speed goes down. So if we go back to here, we can see that in this section here, more distance is traveled in, a, in the same amount of time, let's say two squares. So object speed is increasing. So if we take two squares of time here, um, you can see that the distance is less, so speed is decreasing. So if we're turning back to the exam question, um, when looking at this graph, what you should understand is that as Corsa is the most steepest, Corsa is traveling the fastest. Fiesta is a constant speed, but traveling faster than the leveling off Mini. And of course, the Mini is traveling faster than the Punto, which is stationary, because no distance is being covered and the time is increasing. So the question reads, which car has the highest speed? So choose from the list. So as mentioned, the car traveling with the highest speed, of course, is the Corsa because it tra it's covering the most distance in the least amount of time. And more importantly, from a graph point of view, it's the steepest graph. So the answer is Corsa. So the next question reads, the Fiesta travels at a speed of 110 kilometers per hour. How far will it travel in three hours? So the equations on page two may help you. So it's telling you that you don't really have to memorize the equations, but of course we advise that you do memorize the equations because you haven't got time to flip through what the equations are in the exam room. And it kind of builds your self-confidence knowing that you got the formulas at the top of your head without confirming what they are through the equations book. So if you're given the time and you're given the speed, you're being asked to work out the distance. So for two marks, you got to show you're working for the one mark and then the answer is one mark. So with the aid of the revision guide, you're being asked to recall this formula here basically speed equals distance over time so we're given speed and we're given time we got to work out the distance so basically speed times time equals the distance so all we got to do is multiply the two numbers together so basically if you're 110 times 3 equals 330 and then the answer here is 330 kilometers three kilometer. so moving on to the next exam question now um, what you got to pay attention here is the axes this one is a speed time graph the previous question that we did was a distance time graph now, with speed time graphs, the questions usually ask you to work out what the distance covered is. As we can see here, if we zoom in, we know that speed equals distance over time. So if we're given a speed time graph, two pieces of information here, they're going to ask you to work out the distance traveled. And in the previous exam question where it was a distance time graph, they're going to ask you which graph shows the fastest speed. So just be aware of the differences that when given a speed time graph, they're likely to ask you about the distance covered. And when given a distance time graph, they're going to ask you about the speed about which graph shows the fastest speed or the slowest speed or cost of speed, but it's, it's going to be a speed related question. So going back to the exam question, we zoom in. The question reads, uh, Dali is in the swimming pool. He starts to swim and increases speed. So look at the graph of his speed, speed time graph. And they're basically asking you to focus your attention on the first four seconds at the dotted lines show. So the question continues, Dali accelerates steadily for the first four seconds. He reaches a speed of 1.1 meters per second. So how far does he travel in the first four seconds? Use the graph to help you. So for two marks, one mark to show the working and one mark for the answer. So as we know, speed equals distance over time and distance equals speed times time. So therefore, we just have to multiply the two numbers given for the speed and the time. So we're given the time as shown, four seconds, and we're given the speed as shown. So basically, if you write down four times 1.1 equals 4.4, but the thing is you're not finished yet because the area under the graph is a triangle so it's half of the rectangle so you have to then divide the answer divided by two so you would write 4.4 .4 divided by two so therefore giving your answer 2.2 meters that divided by two is a common careless mistake that many students make so don't forget to do the divided by two part because it's a triangle remember distance under graph so there you have it two marks and the next question reads, Dali swims the next 25 meters in 20 seconds. Calculate Dali's speed. The equations on page 2 may help you. So for two marks, one mark for the answer and one mark for the showing of your answer. Um, 
Although it says equations on page 2 may help you, uh, you know you'll already have the equations in your head already. And uh, we know that as we're given distance and time, and we're being asked to work out the speed, the equation to use here is speed equals distance over time. So from the equation speed equals distance over time, we got distance, we got time. So to work out the speed, it's actually distance divided by time. So 25 divided by 20, written here to show you're working, um, will give you then the answer for the second mark. So 25 divided by time, 20, will give you 1.25 meters per second. So two marks, just like that. So moving on to the next exam question now, all about speed time graphs. Um, what we can say is that if you can understand and master this exam question, you've understood everything you need to know about speed time graphs and indirects and should be able to understand um, distance time graphs as well. So basically you're being asked to match the graph shown on this section with the statements on this section. You gotta match all four to get the two marks. So if we zoom in, this question is about motion. The diagram shows speed time graphs in the first column and there's a list of statements in the second column. Draw a straight line to join each speed time graph with this correct statement. So what we should first do is look for the easiest one to do. And the first statement reads, accelerates at five meters per second squared. That's not that easy. It's traveling at a steady speed, pretty easy. Travels 50 meters in the first two seconds, okay? Travels 30 meters in the first four seconds, right? So the easiest statement to match, you should all know, is traveling at a steady speed. So basically you're just looking for a straight line horizontally and that would represent the steady speed. And of course we know it's this graph here, although it's hard to see. So we'll match the first graph with the second statement. And the next easiest statement to match is this one here, where it says accelerates at five meters per second squared. So basically at every second, you should see a five meters per second increase. So if the first second should show five meters per second, the second second should show 10 meters and the third 15 meters and the fourth second 20 meters. And also because it's saying accelerating and not decelerating. So we're looking for a graph that shows an increasing in speed. So it can't be the first one because the steady speed has already been matched. It can't be the second one because it's losing speed. So it's either the third or the fourth one. So we can see that fourth graph, first second shows five meters per second covered, but the second second is not 10 meters per second covered. So it has to be this graph where it's five meters per second in speed. Second second is 10 meters per second in speed. And the third second is 15, fourth second is 20. So yep, this graph is showing that the object is accelerating at five meters per second squared. So therefore, this graph matches this statement. Going on to the next one, um, statement reads, travels 50 meters in the first two seconds. So what you're looking for is the area under the graph represents 50 meters. So it's either this one or this one. So in the first two seconds, we can see that you've got like a rectangle followed by a triangle. So the rectangle area will be 2 times 20, which is 40. And you got 10 here times 2, which is 20. But you got to divide it by 2 because it's a triangle. So it's 10 plus 40 which will give you the 50 meters in the first two seconds covered. So therefore, this graph matches this statement and leaving the last graph to match the last statement. But let's work out what it's saying just to confirm that we've got the right answer. So it says travels 30 meters in the first four seconds. So the first four seconds times by the speed covered, which is 15. So 15 times four is 60, but because it's a triangle, you divide it by two. So 60 divided by two equals 30 meters. And yep, travels 30 meters in the first four seconds. So there you have it, two marks and everything pretty much that you need to know about speed time graphs. So moving on to the next question now, uh, which is similar to the one that we've just done. The question reads, which graph shows the distance of five meters traveled in the first four seconds? So basically we're looking for which graph A, B, C, or D, where the area under the graph equals to five meters traveled. So if we calculate some of them, let's begin with A. So in the first four seconds, the distance traveled is two. So four times two is eight divided by two because the triangle will give you four meters traveled, which is not the answer. Four seconds, the speed travels two, so four times two, same thing, eight divided by two, four meters travels. These two objects have traveled the same distance, even though they're traveling at different speeds. As for C, in four seconds times two and a half meters per second, will give you 10 divided by two, will give you the five meters traveled. So therefore, that's the answer we're looking for. So for the one mark, the answer is C. So next question, which graph shows an acceleration of 0.2 meters per second squared? So for the one mark, you're looking for the graph where in each second you're going to see an increase in 0.2 meters per second. We can definitely rule out B because it's traveling at a constant speed. So it's between these two. And in the first second, you can see that this car is traveling greater than 0.2 seconds because each square vertically upwards represents 0.2 meters per second. So you can see in the first second, he's already traveling about two and a half squares, which is greater than the 0.2 meters per second that we're looking for. So leaving just graph D, you can see in the first second, it's traveled one square, which is 0.2 meters per second. The second square is two squares, which is an increase of 0.2 meters per second. 
and in third second three squares which is another increase of 0.2 meters per second from the second second and then it increases one square at a time or basically you can say it increases 0.2 meters per second at a time for each second so therefore this question the answer for the one mark is d